Calgary Humane Society has charged a man in relation to an animal abuse investigation where a dog and a cat were found deceased with their muzzles bound shut. On Thursday, January 9th, 2014, the Calgary Humane Society's Protection and Investigations Department was notified by the City of Calgary that a deceased Siberian Husky that had been found in an alley in the 200 block of 99th Avenue Southeast. On Thursday, January 16th, 2014, Gen Calgary Humane Society was informed that a deceased black and white domestic short-haired cat had been found in the same alley. Both animals were taken to a local veterinarian for a necropsy to determine the cause of death. It was determined that the husky died from starvation and that the dog had been chronically malnourished. The veterinarian also determined that the cause of death for the cat was asphyxia due to ligature strangulation following the infliction of multiple traumatic injuries to the head and high, tail and hind limbs. With the assistance of Calgary Police Service, a search warrant was executed on Friday, January 24, 2014 at a residence in the 9900 block of Bonaventure Drive Southeast. Following the lengthy investigation by Calgary Humane Society's Protection and Investigation Department, Nicolino Ivano Camardi, 19, has been charged with two counts of criminal code section 445.1 sub 1 sub a willfully causing unnecessary pain suffering or injury to an animal Questions? What did you find at the home? Uh, when we searched the home with the uh, assistance of Calgary police we were able to see several items that we thought were of interest uh, including uh, various um, samples that we would test forensically uh, there was one animal in the home that we did remove. And what was the state of that animal? Uh, not in as much distress as the ones that had been found previously, but not re not returned. It was a cat. The forensic samples, were they tape? Uh, I won't go into great specifics as to what we took, just that uh, we did take samples that we were then able to send off for analysis. Uh, I can tell you that the animals were sourced off of Kijiji online and um, were, um, were obtained about uh, between two and three months prior to the uh, case by? by the accused. Does it relate to the other Kijiji case that happened last month? Only in that Kijiji was the vehicle for rehoming. So what's your understanding of why he obtained the animals then? Uh, I'd be speculating. I can't speak to that. Is there any satisfaction in resolving this? Absolutely. Uh, you know, the public outcry in this case was warranted, as was, were the resources that we sank into it. And so, yes, it did take four months, but uh, at the end of the day, we were thorough and we're happy with the, the package that we were able to put together. And ultimately, uh, you know, I think we have a, a solid case for uh, conviction. When you look at, uh, at this sort of case, you, you've seen a lot of horrible stuff. How does this uh, it, it's up there. I mean, this is, uh, on the face of it, appears to be intentional cruelty and, uh, you know, not the average abuse type case where someone gets really mad at a, an animal for house soiling or something and loses their, their, te their temper temporarily. Uh, this was methodical, it was chronic, and um, ended in the animal's deaths. Do you have the impression he's ever done this before? Uh, I can't speak to his, his criminal record. Were you aware of him before? I can't speak to that. Can you speak to what people selling pets on Kijiji might be thinking at this point and how they might protect themselves and the animals? Well, I think the last week, um, I think this is probably case number four that's gotten significant media play. Uh, in all those cases, animals were either uh, rehomed online or, or sourced online. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily Kijiji that's, that's the bad guy in this. It's, it's just a vehicle uh, online. People need to be really wary of both selling and buying you know, on the buying end of things. Uh, when you're giving an animal away for free, that opens up, uh, you know, anyone can come and get that animal. If you add a value to the animal, uh, there's more of a likelihood that that person that's getting the animal is going to value the animal. On the other end of it, if you're purchasing an animal online, um, you want to be aware of red flags. You know, if somebody's meeting you in a parking lot and selling you animals out of the back of a vehicle, that's probably set off some red flags for you. So, um, it's not, is it my recommendation that you rehome animals online? No, and uh, certainly these, these cases drive that point home. There are uh, community resources available for people that need to rehome their animals, and, and one of those great resources is the Calgary Humane Society. Sorry, I'm not sure.
you said this. So when did he obtain these animals off of Kijiji? Like how long had these animals been in his possession? They were obtained between two and three months prior to the uh, discovery of the animals in the alley. How much you paid for them? I don't. And the cat that was found in the house, sorry, what, what happened to the cat? Uh, the cat was, was seized by us and was never reclaimed. And that was the only other animal? Yes. Did he also, do you know how he obtained that cat and what kind of cat? Uh, it was a, a short-haired cat. Uh, to my knowledge, it was with the family long-term. Oh, he had a long-time pet? Family pet, yeah. Does he live in a home with anybody, or is he the sole occupant there? Uh, it, it's a family home. I won't get into specifics as to who the other occupants are. Just speak again, you, you mentioned being wanting to be thorough during the four months. Um, is that sort of the brief? Because the search warrant had been done about a week after the cat was found, I believe. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of the, the reasoning behind the time between the search warrant and then the arrest of the name? Yeah, certainly. I mean, four months is a long time for those that, uh, you know, want instant gratification. Um, it moved quickly uh, from the time that we uh, put the uh, the media release out and uh, and started getting uh, tips from the public. But uh, we were we were sent in that direction on canvas, and um, we focused on Mr. Camardi from from an early point. Um, after the search warrant, it was a we sent off quite a few uh, samples to be analyzed, and uh, it was a waiting game at that point. It's it's not a quick situation. Uh, when those results did return and they were favorable. Um, we were able to, to move forward with uh, involving CPS in, in the arrest of this individual. It's safe to say then that it was more evidence-based charges rather than witness-based charges? A uh, combination of both. So it's a family home, so were the, there's only one charge here though, so were the other people who lived in the house, were they totally unaware of you know, what was happening to these animals? Uh, that would be speculation. Uh, you know, the charges were laid against uh, Mr. Camardi because uh, in, in, our, in our investigation, uh, he appeared to be the individual responsible for the offenses. But they were living in the house at the time that these animals were being seized? Correct. So they would have some knowledge? Again, that would be speculation. I guess to just follow up on that, I mean, you know, we're talking about an animal that has been starved over some time. I, I recall you saying, or someone saying that, that, that it had been months been starved. Mm -hmm. So I guess would it stand to reason that somebody would have made, been aware of that other than just the suspect, the deterioration of these animals? Again, it's, it's possible, but uh, I, I don't want to speculate. Right. Could there be other charges for other people in the house? I mean, from an outsider's perspective, it, it looks like it's hard to say that you're totally innocent if you sit there and watch an animal be abused for several months and you get off scot-free. This, uh, this charge was laid under the criminal code, which uh, dictates intent, and in this case, uh, Mr. Camardi was the one with the intent to abuse the animals. And he was the, the, the owner, so if you don't own the dog, then you're not responsible. That's not necessarily the case, but he was certainly the, I would submit, the responsible party for, for these offenses and the one with the intent to commit them. Obviously, this has to go through the courts, but can you speak to the maximum penalties? As I said, the, uh, the charges relate under the criminal code, and under this section, uh, the maximum would be five years imprisonment. Can you speak to what this says about an individual who would do this kind of thing? Uh, like I say, this, this is a, an abuse-type case. Well, it's, it's more than abuse. It's chronic neglect uh, as well as, as abuse. Um, this is not your average, uh, I lost my temper because the animal did uh, something to anger me type situation. Again, I'm not going to speculate on, on his frame of mind or his, his motivations, but uh, certainly concerning. And there, there is scientific uh, evidence of uh, a link between animal abuse and, and the uh, escalation to human violence later. The maximum penalty you said is up to five years imprisonment. What's the range? The uh, that's on indictable. Um, if it were proceeded on by summary conviction, it would be believe 18 months or $10,000, so uh, really anywhere in that range. 18 months or $10,000 is the summary? On summary, yeah. Do investigators believe there might be other animals that were victimized? Uh, there, there is some information that indicates there may have been some animals in the home over time. Um, as for enough uh, evidence to proceed with that, uh, no. I mean, the reason that I'm asking you, sorry, because it's so rare, I mean, why distribute his photo 
Like why, why did you distribute his photo to us, his Facebook number? Well, ultimately, I think it's important that uh, those that might be taking in Mr. Camardi or selling an animal to Mr. Camardi um, be aware of who Mr. Camardi is. Do you know if he's in custody? Uh, I'm not aware. Given the high emotion of this case, I mean, already, you know, social media is full of death threats and the like towards him. Any concern, his photo's out there now. The address of the home is very easy to pinpoint in terms of it's only a very short block. Any concerns about that? Uh, concerns for his safety? Concerns for his safety and maybe other people living in the home. It's certainly something you keep in mind. Um, you know, as for uh, other people taking it upon themselves to, uh, for lack of a better term, be vigilantes, uh, you know, hopefully they have the, the mind to uh, keep their threats to, you know, social media where it's anonymous and, and not terribly threatening and, and not follow through with that sort of criminal behavior. So are you guys actively looking for this guy? No, he was arrested over the weekend. Okay, but he's not in custody anymore. I'm not aware. That's maybe a better question for Calgary Police Service. Sir, do you want to step up and answer Sure. So this is Acting Staff Sergeant Lloyd Soltis. So can you just spell your last name for them? My last name is spelled S-O-L-T-Y-S. To, to speak to that yeah, no, no, I, I can't speak to, to your question, sir. Uh, Mr. Camardi was arrested on Saturday, um, May the 3rd, um, without incident. Yeah, Mr. Co uh, Camardi was cooperative with the investigation. He was um, subsequently held in custody over the weekend and was appearing in court this morning on, uh, it's my understanding, on CCTV this morning. So the outcome of whether or not Mr. Camardi is still in custody or if he has appeared yet this morning, I'm not aware of. Any other questions for staff sergeants? I guess from a policing perspective, when you talk to Brad about it, about this, because there was such emotion, it really did a nerve. Are you worried about backlash against him? Did you land here, sir? At, at, at this point in time, um, I mean, we do appeal to the public to uh, to have faith in the investigators, in the investigation, and to let justice uh, prevail in this circumstance. Um, I have full confidence in, in this system and that Mr. Camardi is facing these allegations and these allegations will be handled appropriately by the justice system. The Calgary Police Service, in conjunction with the Calgary Humane Society, obviously takes any and all such allegations very, very seriously. And we do not minimize uh, what has taken place in this incident, but we do encourage the public to have faith in the justice system and let that system prevail uh, and preside over this incident. Are police going to be using any resources at all to make sure that there's no vigilantism against this guy to protect him in, in some way? At, at this point in time, there is nothing to indicate that there are any concerns uh, in relation to vigilantism and we are not initiating any resources to respond to that. In your experience, are these charges and the, uh, the resulting uh, conviction, is it, is it enough? You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, but I can't speak to speak to that, given my experience, and, and any and so all such cases, the uh, uh, investigator uh, from Animal Protection uh, Investigations would be better to speak to that. Brad, do you want to come up and answer sure. that? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I'm just wondering if, if you if you translated these types of offenses into you know what had happened to a human. Obviously, I think the consequences would be a lot steeper. If you speak to how that generally, in your experience, has played out. Yeah, I know. I don't think it would be dealt with uh, on the same level as, as if it were a human. Um, animals are considered to be property under the law, which um, you know minimizes, um, in, in a sense, their suffering. That said, I mean, we, we do have incarceration of up to five years on the table. And, you know, in my experience with these types of cases, when you do get incarceration as a conviction uh, sentence, it's generally in the range of about 90 days. So uh, I think there's the potential here on conviction to, you know, set some precedent as far as uh, how much time uh, he may receive. Uh, but ultimately, that's for the courts to figure out. So just to be crystal clear, sorry to go back to this point. So the sentence is could be between 18 months and five years or a ten thousand dollar fine. Correct. Okay. I have a question actually. Could you speak a little bit about um, any history with the law? I, I'm I'm sorry, but I, I cannot okay. comment on Mr. Camardi's history. Any other 
questions for either at this point? So are you concerned at all that an individual who is capable of doing these types of things could escalate that to humans? Is that something that the, you know, obviously the courts or the justice system is concerned about? The, of course, investigators and the police service is always concerned about any and all such behavior. However, anything further to that about an individual would be speculation on my part, and I cannot comment about that at this time. Would he be subject to psychological assessment? I, I cannot comment at that at this time. Okay. So the investigators contact the Kijiji sellers of the animals? I'm sorry. The, uh, in this case, uh, we are not aware of who the Kijiji seller was, just that they were obtained off of the, the site. And they were separate sellers or the same person? Not to my knowledge, it was the same person. Okay. There was another case recently of animal cruelty in the city. Are you concerned that these uh, incidents are escalating? Well, I mean, we, we investigate uh, between 1,200 and 1,500 cases of animal cruelty per year, so it's the numbers tend to stay fairly um, consistent. Um, this this is an outlier. You know, this is a, a very concerning case, and and that's why we have um, given so many resources to it to see it to this point. Um, you know, I would say that something like this is is very rare. Um, most uh, most abuse cases where uh, they are prosecuted have to do with a, a very bad decision and a very quick moment of uh, bad judgment or, or, or anger management, whereas this was uh, carried out over time, uh, neglect-wise, as well as chronic abuse to both animals. So this is a very concerning case, and uh, that's why we're, you know, we're very satisfied to see that uh, we were able to bring it through to uh, charge.